Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the oxides and chlorides of period 3 and in particular their physical properties. Um, it's the first in a series of five films about the high level periodicity topic in the IB diploma and hopefully by the end of this film you'll be able to not only describe the electrical conductivity and the physical states or more precisely their melting and boiling points of the oxides and chlorides in period 3 but also to explain them in terms of their physical properties and I guess this might sound quite familiar based on what you've covered in the standard level topic and there's a good reason why and that is because quite a lot of these compounds that we're going to look at here have already turned up in the standard level topic so you can see here in white compounds that we should already be familiar with okay and we've on the top row here we've got the oxides starting with sodium oxide magnesium oxide and aluminium oxide which we know are ionic oxides and therefore do what all ionic compounds do which is uh, conduct when molten and aqueous but insulate when solid and tend to have quite high melting points because they've got strong ionic bonds here we've got a co uh, covalent network in silicon dioxide which we already know about so we know that it doesn't conduct and it's got a very high melting point and here we've got the covalent molecules which we don't expect to conduct but which we expect to have rather low melting and boiling points because of the weak intermolecular forces and what you can see basically here in green is that a few other oxides have turned up in the high level course so you need to be aware of the fact that phosphorus can exist as two different oxides P4O10, which we should be familiar with already, and P4O6, which is just coming up now. Sulfur, again, has two oxides, sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, and chlorine, two oxides as well. Okay. As far as the chlorides go, again, we've got some that are familiar, and they're in white from the standard level topic. So we've got the ionic chlorides on the left and the covalent chlorides on the right. So again, ionic solids conduct under certain conditions but not under others and tend to have high melting points, whereas these don't conduct and have low melting and boiling points. What's new here is aluminium chloride, and we're going to have a bit of a closer look at that substance in this film. Okay, so here it is, and we could say that it's got rather odd properties. The reason why it's got such odd properties is because although it exists as an ionic lattice in the solid state the aluminium 3 plus ion is such a small and highly charged ion that it can do quite a good job of pulling back these electrons which aluminium gave to the chlorine now if these electron pairs here that you can see between aluminium and the chloride ions if they get pulled back towards aluminium and end up being shared between the two atoms then what you can say is that these ionic bonds have got quite a lot of covalent character they're starting to look like covalent bonds and what actually happens um, when we um, melt aluminium chloride is that it forms this and, and when we vaporize it is it forms this dimer structure where two of these AlCl3 molecules basically join together to make this Al2Cl6 molecule where we've got these dative covalent bonds from the chlorine atoms to the aluminium atoms and because this is starting to look like a covalent substance it starts to behave like one as well so in other words aluminium chloride's got a much much lower melting and boiling point than you would expect to see for an ionic substance even though it essentially exists as an ionic lattice in the solid state it's got such a high degree of covalent character that it behaves quite a lot like a, comp a covalent compound does well that's quite a short film because there's not really all that much in there that we haven't already covered in the standard level topic hopefully you can use what you already know about ionic and covalent substances to explain the electrical conductivity and physical states of these oxides and chlorides that we've just looked at. If any of it is perhaps a bit of a distant memory then perhaps go back and review your notes from the standard level topic but if any of it doesn't make sense or if you've got any other questions then please feel free to get in touch either by coming to see me or hopefully so that other people can see your questions by posting some comments.